you know, I spent a lot of time sitting and talking with players and team owners prior to even announcing the league when we were designing it. And I mean, there's, there's so many stories if you look at the history of esports of just bad things happening to players. So one of the things was like, let's, let's make this a league where every gamer in the world aspires to be a part of it. When you make it to Overwatch League, it's amazing. You're a professional athlete, you're treated like that, you have all this infrastructure around you, you're, you're, a, you're a superstar. With all the talk of grand visions and investment millions, it's easy to forget that ultimately, the future of the league rests on the shoulders of a few young, passionate Overwatch players. They've come from far and wide, some with experience in esports, others with just the dream of being able to play their favorite game for a living. Each one of them has challenges to overcome, be it an unfamiliar culture, a language barrier, or the need to prove the legitimacy of their chosen career. They are all taking a risk, hoping that they can establish themselves as the best Overwatch players in the world, and perhaps pioneer a new future for esports too. In many ways, the Overwatch League is only as strong as those competing within it, and in this episode we sat down with the young, ambitious athletes who are chasing their dreams for success in an emerging esport. I was uh, living at my friend's house for like a month and I just found out Overwatch. It was just released. I really thought Overwatch was going to be a really big esports and uh, I just decided, you know, I think I'm just going to be a pro from the get-go. I want to be a pro. I know, I know what I need to do. I know the mistakes I've made. Uh, I think I can do this. I had a plan, I had a plan, I swear. You know, like, it, the budget was there. I, it was like all the money I made from streaming and like tournament winnings uh, from League. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take everything I made from here to invest into Overwatch. And I got my own place in Koreatown in LA. And I lived there for about a little bit more than a year. And I, I tried competed in the like tier three and eventually tier two scene. And I had like less than three digits in my bank account. And I didn't even know what to think. I just, <laughs> the second I pay my rent, I'm just like, <laughs> like, what do I do? After scrims, I just got a call from like LA Gladiators and they're like, hey, <laughs> wanna play? And I was like, I was pretty cool about it. I was like, yeah, yeah, that sounds great. And I was inside, I was just like jumping around. <laughs> Getting the journey to get to the professional level, it's, it's a really hard thing. Um, it's really hard to see the journey going forward, like connect that dot going forward. Um, I knew when the game first released into beta, uh, I really wanted to at least give it an opportunity to go pro, so that's one of the main reasons I moved to North America. It's just one of those things that you just really got to put everything you have into it. Uh, if, you, if you try and sort of like half-ass it or, you know, not really give it everything you have, it's really hard to sort of reach that top level. So it's just something you got to be really prepared for, you know, the journey. I mean, I've always been a huge nerd my entire life. I remember when StarCraft II started to blossom as a big eSport, I tried to show my mom, like, look, they get paid to play this game. I want to do that, you know? And she couldn't understand it, or my dad couldn't understand it. The only one who really understood, like, eSports and what it is was my brother, my big brother. It's still, like, kind of a conundrum to my parents, I guess. I mean, my family, never against me for playing game as a professional or something, but in Thailand we have the problem that the, the children, they addict to the game and they do nothing, they're bad at studying, like everything is going bad. It was sort of a hard sell at, the, at, the, at first. I said I wanted to go play video games professionally and I wasn't going to get paid for a while until I, unless I actually made it. If I didn't make it, I wasn't going to get paid ever. But I believe in myself, uh, my family trusted me to do what I thought was best for me. Skepticism towards a career in esports is unsurprising. For many people, video games are still considered a hobby, not to be taken seriously. The idea of dedicating your entire life to them is filled with questions, and the prospect of trying to earn a living from them with uncertainty. If Overwatch League was to have any sort of legitimacy, Blizzard had to tackle these concerns. For it to grow, it needs to attract players, and to attract players, it needs to show there are valuable opportunities and stability. We had all heard these horror stories of the exploitation that was happening to pro players in esports where you know teams weren't paying their players or they'd win a LAN and they wouldn't share the prize pool or all these sort of disasters that were going on. And one of the things that Nate was very vocal about was protecting the players and making sure that they were salaried 
that they had benefits, that the teams really had an obligation to their players and that we were gonna put that into the contracts and make sure that these young and upcoming superstars were not exploited or taken advantage of, that they uh, not only had a lot of rights, but that they were compensated extremely well, whether their team was winning or losing, and um, that there was lots of room for growth. And there was more to this than, hey, show up to the LAN and maybe you'll win some money, maybe you won't. That's not, that's not professional in our opinion. The thing about esports before this was like, you could be playing tournaments with a team before that and then the next the next day you could be cut and then all of a sudden you don't have a source of income anymore. Um, Overwatch League sort of gave us that guaranteed benefits and salary for at least a year. So it really allows you to forget about money, forget about all the exterior circumstances of life and just focus on the game, which is really important, you know, when you're at the professional level. I wouldn't say I feel safer because at the end of the day, it's a talent industry and you have to perform to be able to keep your job. It is, of course, very, very nice that they have like this baseline uh, salary, um, which is, as you would say, uh, it legitimizes esports in a way. I feel like it's more professional. Everything is kind of like bigger, and we have like, as you can see, the sponsor, is, it's not just like the gaming gear, or like everything that's related to the computer, or like internet, something like that, is way bigger than that, and I think, it's kind of like get to the point that can call it as a real sport. Uh, now a lot of different games are jumping on the same trend, like League is trying to franchise. It eliminates the unprofessional scene in esports. And with Blizzard coming in and saying, no, we're going to do it this way, it, it really lifts up esports in a good light. And this is actually a real thing. This is actually a league, um, which is really awesome to see. Well, it's really important to us that the players could have a real career at this. It's encouraging to me to see in our first season how many teams, they don't just have like a coach, they have a data analyst and they have a performance coach and they have a physical trainer and a nutritionist and they're working on their sleep schedules. And uh, to see that level of uh, rigor around uh, what they're building, to see the level of investment is really encouraging. I think it's really important for the players to know that at the highest level in the company they're supported so that they know that if they need something to help them perform better, that they don't have to go through 10 different layers of management to get it. They can tap on the guy who actually hired them to, to provide those things for him. Playing esports is, it, it's a tough job. There's a lot of pressure, with not only just like from your teammates um, in your family, but tons of fans. And having a really strong base of people behind you within the company can help you get through like the hard times. For Overwatch League players, the demands go beyond just performing in-game. With more eyes on them than ever before, each one is thrust into the spotlight, where their words and actions all contribute to building their profile and strengthening their brand. Part of being an Overwatch League player means also being a personality for people to latch onto. You know, I think it's a big challenge for young people. Like if you think about the average age of a player in a league is probably you know, 20, 21, something in that zone. A lot of these uh, players in the league, especially the, the even younger ones than that, there's some people that are literally moving like from home to now I'm a internet famous esport player. I went from like nobody knowing who I am to now I have 10,000 Twitter followers and now you, know, you sort of get under this microscope and we have a responsibility, our team owners have a responsibility to help prepare our players for that and give them the tools they need to be successful. But I think we're always going to encourage our players to have personality, but we're also going to encourage our players to be respectful and professional and act like professionals. I mean, they are representatives of the game. Fans look up to them and especially a game like Overwatch, which has a pretty young audience. Nobody wants to be told that, hey, guess what? You're a role model now. But the reality is, like, there's a lot of young kids that really look up to the players in the Overwatch League. I'm so proud of my team. I'm so proud of you guys! To be honest, I never know what to say when, like, oh yeah, I, like, I'm looking up to you, or not even that, but I just want to be a pro gamer, or my son's trying to be a pro gamer. That's the hardest one. When moms ask you, oh yeah, my son, he's like pretty good, but he really wants to be a pro gamer, and I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if I should stop it. I just like, I just like stop and think, cause like, what do I need to say here? Cause like, sure, I, I want to say like, go for it, but then the amount of like emotional stress and like. It's a marathon. It's like, it's like, there's like so many things that you need to constantly do and it's so easy to get burnt out. Even the professional players, it's like compared to watching stage one, like right now we're in stage four and there's like tons of player that really didn't know how to 
balance life, I guess. It's the weirdest thing you've ever you've ever experienced, especially coming from really nothing. Like I'm just here to play video games. I'm just here to I'm just here to compete. And then you had these people looking up. It's it's a really humbling thing knowing that you can have an impact on other people's lives and like have these people aspire to you. At that point, it's just about being the best role model you can be. Obviously, there's a lot of things that I've had to change. You know, I, you're not perfect. The most important thing is being yourself in the public because people don't want to aspire to someone that who's not actually who they are. Give it up for the Florida Mayhem. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Swoosh, leading the pony ride to the stage. My nephew, who is 13 now, he always watched me when they every day came over to, and I would sit there and play video games. He would always take a share and watch what I'm doing. At the beginning, he started playing Hanzo and I tried to, no, 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 play something different. Uh, but he, he really loved the game as well. And then when I started traveling places and playing in tournaments, he would tell his friends about it at home and they would all sit and watch the games. My big sister, who's the mother of my nephew, of course, um, she messaged me and she was like, oh, when, I, when you come home, you have to meet all his friends because they're just talking about you all the time and they really want to meet you, you know? Um, and it's just crazy to think about uh, how much passion they have for the game. When it comes to esports, since there are a lot of people who aren't familiar with pro sports, there's the assumption that everything should be perfect and there should be no missteps along the way. And the reality is, both with esports and pro sports, we're talking about very young, very talented individuals who might not be at a stage of life where everything is gonna go perfect for them. As we know, even at an older stage of life, nothing goes perfect for us. So I don't know why we would think at 18 or 19, we would be these perfect model citizens at all times. People are people, and uh, just because you're talented, whether it be at a sport or at a video game, uh, doesn't mean you're not going to be without your flaws. I think we have to just be open to and accepting that there's going to be some rough edges, but that's sort of what makes it cool and interesting and not always look at those rough edges as failures. I definitely miss home a lot. I want to go back, I miss my friends, I miss my, I miss my family, but I'm not young, I'm an adult. So I need to learn how to live alone. I need to learn how to handle the situation. It's kind of like, it's, it's a real world, it's a, how do you say that, reality. It's okay now, but when I was in high school, things were rough. Cause like, for me at least, I was like never, I was okay at studying, you know, for amount of time I spent in studying, the grades were like, aren't, weren't that good. So I was like never really that into studying. Sports were, were okay, but I never like, got to like play team sports. So I think like, I always felt like I missed out on those, you know, as, as cheesy as it sounds. Like I was like, I never had like a teammate on any of these sports. And I always like wanted to work with people. I wanted to like play games with other people and pull things off that other people can't. When I finally was introduced to something that I, I enjoyed, that I was good at, those, those two were like something that never happened together. It was like I either liked something and I was completely garbage at it or I'm good but I just hate it or I'm like decent but I'm hating it and I know like I would like never get good because I would never spend the extra effort. I've missed out on a lot of opportunities before when I was like I was always like too shy or I, was, I didn't really have the commitment or the drive to really like go out of my way to build my own brand. Uh, after I got into Overwatch League just my, my mindset changed a lot. I guess I guess maybe it was just because I was like never this desperate before and it just felt like I was given one last chance to really really come back and really make the most out of my love for gaming. My parents would probably be like the best arc to look at in terms of skepticism to, you know, approval because, you know, when I first you know, went to my mom and I was like, hey, I want to drop out of university and I want to go play video games in North America. It, was, it wasn't easy for her, but, you know, she's my number one fan. She, she slowly learned about the industry and understanding, hey, this is actually something that's big. This is something that's growing. These people are actually like a big deal and that they are trying to get to the level that sports is at. So it is a hard sell for people, especially the older generations who don't really understand it as much. But I think within the new generations, it's becoming a lot more common. I think to have a goal of becoming an Overwatch League professional player is amazing, but really challenging at the same time. When you consider how few pros exist in the world, you know, how limited the rosters are, and the fact that there's currently 12 teams, that's gonna be a big challenge to make it on that team. I don't think that should dissuade people from trying to achieve that goal. I think one of the things that happens to all of us in our life is 
as we chase certain goals, we realize the path that our life should actually be on and the goals that we should actually be chasing. So I think people will calibrate. I thought I was going to be an amazing novelist someday, and that was going to be my career of a brilliant writer, and I'm probably one of the worst writers that I've ever read. So we all have to be willing to adjust in our paths every once in a while. <laughs> In the final episode of this series, we reflect on Blizzard's vision for Overwatch League, its achievements so far, and where everyone involved hopes it will go in the future.